One Punch Man. This manga is one of, if not arguably, besides One Piece and Bleach, my favorite manga of all time. And as a One Punch Man enthusiast and interacting with other goats, the one thing I usually find apparent when talking to people about the series is that Saitama is rarely ever brought up. Now you guys may be wondering, Ty Learn, wh what are you on about? This man is the main character, my brother in Christ, the series name is based off his reputation. What I mean by this is, when you think of One Punch Man, people usually talk about the other S-Class heroes and how they're pretty cool or usually just bring up Garo, but Saitama himself is not really mentioned too much besides the fact that he's funny. But to me, this is really strange, and it comes off to me that people don't really care too much about Saitama's character or don't really pay too much attention to it. However, I wanted to dedicate a video to me just talking about the beauty of Saitama's character and why he's a great protagonist, especially for the world of One Punch Man. Now, Saitama, like a lot of us, was a normal human who really lived the average life. No real excitement, bro was a simple pedestrian you would walk past in real life. He'd go on to see a kid get bullied by a monster with no hero around, forcing him to step in. Saitama easily could have walked away like anyone else, and despite Saitama being outclassed, it was in his human nature to save this kid and from this, he managed to find something maybe worth living for. It sounds depressing, but as a boring bland individual, Saitama really did lack the life that a lot of people would have in them. Dreams, goals, opportunities, that never really hit Saitama until this very moment. We see him then decide to aim for the top, and as we all know, 100 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and a 10km dash for a few years made him the strongest hero on the planet. And the intention one had for this was so Saitama could be anything but generic. Usually when people hate on One Punch Man, they're like, oh, it's boring because he one-punches everything. There's no challenge. However, I would argue that it's the exact opposite. We see MCs usually go from weak to strong as the story progresses, but for Saitama, he has that endgame power right now, and the main conflict that Saitama goes through is a mental struggle. So for those who are like, oh yeah, he just one-shots everything, it's boring. The author literally intended for this to be the opposite, and it worked. Name one of the common shonen pro tags y'all always gas up that's comparable to Saitama. Saitama doesn't want to aim to be the very best, he already is the best, he wants to find someone that can satisfy him. Saitama would obviously go on to become a hero, but the twist here is that Saitama actually ranks super low and did bad on the test so he isn't even number one just yet in the hero world. And after facing threats like Carnage Kabuto, Deep Sea King, even a Meteor, he would meet the first person who actually understood his goal of being the best, that being Boros. You see, Boros, like Saitama, simply went around trying to prove he was the strongest in order to finally get the challenge he deserved. Only difference between these two is that Saitama is not only just defined by his goal, but also his human nature. Even when saving the meteor and thinking he did a good job, the city still did take a lot of damage due to Saitama specifically splitting it. If Boros was in this situation, he would have simply just been mad at the fact that the meteor didn't press him at all, but Saitama is genuinely concerned with what he's doing, wondering if this is all even worth it if he's just gonna get people hurt. Genos 2 also knows that Saitama does definitely care about wanting a good fight, but he doesn't put that over innocent lives. And that's because Saitama by nature is a hero, whether he wants to deny it or not. Now, Boros did understand Saitama's goal, however, he wasn't even the first person to press him, and by the end of his fight with Saitama, he would come to the realization that he never really understood Saitama's true strength at the end of the day. The prophecy he was following of a strong warrior actually satisfying him wasn't Saitama, due to him simply being too strong. Both Saitama and Boros technically lost in this fight, but for different reasons. Saitama lost because he thought due to Boros understanding his goal, maybe he could actually give him a satisfying fight, but he was proven wrong. And as for Boros, he was following a prophecy of a strong warrior that could satisfy him, but he in actuality was in over his head. Saitama would continue as a hero where we would get introduced to Garo, who's Saitama's next big enemy. Now what I like about Garo is instead of being like Boro similar to Saitama, Garo is sort of the opposite. Yes, they both want to be the strongest, but Garo is doing it to simply prove a point and the protagonist of the story doesn't always have to be a hero. Which perfectly ties into what Saitama is going through since he believes that he can't get any more powerful and truly questions if he should just give up being a hero entirely. However, King would smack him into reality, saying that at the end of the day, Saitama is here to do good, and what he's doing for the people is good. Therefore, he is a good hero. But Saitama not seeing himself this way gets King to questioning himself. 
King reaches Saitama when he's about to fall, in contrast to Bang not being able to reach Garo after he believed that he peaked in strength. And I also do appreciate Saitama's mental conflict due to him not gaining power as we see Garo gradually becoming stronger and stronger. This was a good foreshadow for Garo as just when he thought he finally was at the top going from getting beaten up by Watchdog Man oppressing some of the strongest heroes in the whole association, Bang included, which weirdly enough comes into play with Saitama and Garo's conflict because Garo begins to tap into his human nature when he's fighting Bang for the second time. He would save Butchin and even go on to make him a friend, so much so that Garo the monster criminal is going out of his way to put himself in harm's way to ensure a kid's survival. As Garo went on to become more and more of a monster, he would get closer and closer to his human nature and his fight with Bang shows that. Even when Garo caused a bunch of chaos, Bang is willing to start fresh even if it meant that he and Garo could get out of this because at the end of the day, Bang felt guilty. He was willing to put his career and life down to simply reach his student because Bang cares about Garo. And so that human nature I was talking about comes cracking out of Garo's shell and forming himself into the perfect fighter he wanted to become. This would finally lead into Garo and Saitama's final confrontation where clearly Garo is outmatched in power but we see that his skills and abilities, and now even in the recent chapters of the manga, perform even better than Boros himself did. And I do appreciate that as the series progresses and Saitama and Garo meet little by little until their final confrontation, Garo finally comes to the realization that his biggest obstacle yet wasn't any of the S-Class heroes, wasn't any of the cadres, it was this bald f and we even see when these two are fighting, Saitama knows himself that deep down Garo is a good person, and when Saitama is even trying to sort of save him, Garo just gets enraged. Garo is mad here because what he believed in, the concept of heroes not always being good, doesn't really apply to Saitama. At least, not anymore. Saitama, even when fighting the biggest threat on the field, believed that he's not all bad because Saitama can understand what Garo is going through. One Punch Man gradually shows us the moral conflict Saitama has with being a hero, and by the end of the monster, Association, I believe him to be a complete hero. He's a hero led by his human nature, and I can't wait to see where they take the character next.